we all know the buzz around the first and second Starship launches. Even people who usually don't pay much attention to rocket launches were watching to see how it would go. It's impressive to note that this company wasn't even around two decades ago. In a relatively short time, SpaceX has moved from being an industry newcomer to dominating the space launch market. Now, even organizations as established as NASA rely on SpaceX for their mission needs. Recently, SpaceX made headlines again by achieving something no other company has managed to do before. When a company faces financial challenges or is at risk, they tend to innovate and find new ways to reduce costs. This lead to groundbreaking ideas and significant advancements in technology. On the flip side, government agencies, which typically rely on taxpayer funding, may not experience the same pressure to innovate. This can result in the continued use of older technologies. Even when more efficient and cost-effective solutions are available. NASA is the best example of this, especially when comparing its approach with that of private companies like SpaceX. NASA has often been criticized for its reliance on old technologies. The SLS rocket, for example, incorporates technologies and components from the space shuttle era, such as its RS-25 engines. These engines, while proven and reliable, represent a technology that was developed over four decades ago. Moreover, the SLS's operational approach do not embrace the concept of reusability. As a result, each SLS launch runs into billions of dollars. Meanwhile, SpaceX has significantly reduced the cost of rocket launches by introducing the concept of reusability. Traditional rockets, used once and then discarded, contribute to high launch costs. In contrast, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket can be reused for multiple launches. The Falcon 9's ability to land its first stage back on Earth. For refurbishment and subsequent reuse has been key to this cost reduction. While a single Falcon 9 launch costs around $62 million, this is considerably less expensive than the cost of launches using non-reusable rockets. And recently, SpaceX achieved what was once considered impossible with its Falcon 9 rocket. The company set a new record by completing three launches within just 20 hours. The launches included sending a four-member crew to the International Space Station, launching 53 satellites on the Transporter 10 rideshare flight, and deploying 23 Starlink satellites into orbit. The first mission involved sending the Crew-8 mission to the International Space Station from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Following the launch, the Dragon spacecraft underwent a series of automatic maneuvers guided by SpaceX Mission Control to dock autonomously with the space station's module. Although the spacecraft was capable of autonomous docking, the crew had the ability to take control and pilot manually if necessary. Upon their arrival, the crew eight members were welcomed by the seven-member crew of Expedition 70 on the islands. They conducted several days of handover activities with the departing astronauts of NASA's SpaceX Crew-7 mission. The Crew-8 team is set to stay on the International Space Station, during which they will conduct over 200 experiments in various fields. This mission also marks a milestone for the Dragon spacecraft, as it represents its fifth flight, contributing to its record of days in orbit. Following this launch, the Transporter 10 mission lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California carrying 53 payloads. Lastly, the batch of 23 Starlink Internet satellites was launched from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. With these launches, SpaceX has now placed over 5,000 working Starlink satellites in orbit. SpaceX has received approval from the Federal Communications Commission to launch up to 12,000 Starlink satellites. However, the company has plans to expand this constellation even further. SpaceX has filed paperwork with international regulators to launch up to 30,000 additional satellites beyond the already approved 12,000, aiming for a megaconstellation of up to 42,000 satellites. SpaceX will initially rely heavily on the Falcon 9 rocket, which has been the workhorse of SpaceX's launch fleet. However, while the Falcon 9 has been key in establishing the Starlink network, its capacity limitations mean that deploying tens of thousands of additional satellites would require a considerable number of launches over many years. The Falcon 9 can carry approximately 60 Starlink satellites per launch. If each Falcon 9 launch carries 60 satellites, SpaceX would need 700 launches to deploy the entire constellation. 
given SpaceX's increasing launch cadence assuming they can manage roughly 40 Falcon 9 launches per year dedicated to Starlink, it would take approximately 17 years to complete the constellation with Falcon 9 launches alone. In contrast, the Starship has a much higher lift capacity. The rocket's payload capacity to low Earth orbit is up to 100 tons. Given the size and weight of a Starlink satellite, it's possible that Starship could carry several hundred satellites per launch, potentially around 400. If Starship can indeed carry 400 Starlink satellites per launch, SpaceX would need 105 launches to deploy the entire 42,000 satellites. They started the Starship project around 2018, with the ambitious goal of creating a fully reusable spacecraft for missions to Mars and beyond. By April 20, 2023, SpaceX had already conducted its first integrated flight test of Starship. Unfortunately, this test ended in the destruction of the vehicle four minutes into the flight. Despite the setback, SpaceX continued its development and conducted a second integrated flight test on November 18, 2023, which also encountered challenges with both vehicles lost after the test. The gap between the first and second integrated flight tests was less than seven months, and the next planned third Starship flight is set for March 14th. This pace is striking for a rocket as complex and large as Starship. Standing about 120 meters tall and capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons to orbit. Most recently, SpaceX successfully carried out a wet dress rehearsal for the Flight 3 hardware. This test involves loading the rocket with fuel and going through all launch protocols without an actual launch. The success of this test indicates that the rocket systems and the launch procedures are functioning correctly. During this test, over 10 million pounds of cryogenic propellant were loaded into the Starship and its super-heavy booster. Remarkably, this entire process was completed in a record time of just 45 minutes, which is a result of the latest upgrades to the tank farm system. These improvements have significantly increased the propellant loading rate to approximately 1.5 to 2 tons per second. Furthermore, these upgrades have also added a simultaneous subcooling process. This addition is crucial for maintaining the low temperatures required for the cryogenic propellants, ensuring they remain in a liquid state and are ready for launch. This successful test is particularly noteworthy given the challenges SpaceX faced during two previous attempts in mid February. For this third flight, the official launch process is expected to span approximately four hours. During the pre-flight phase, about one hour and 15 minutes before liftoff, SpaceX's flight director will greenlight the start of propellant loading. This step is crucial and is estimated to take between 20 to 30 minutes. Following this, the process of loading liquid oxygen and methane onto the rocket stages begins, with the booster being prioritized due to its larger size. This ensures efficient fuel loading and optimizes the rocket's mass distribution for stability. This includes fueling the rocket, which tests both the equipment and the team's ability to handle the complex procedures involved in preparing for launch. Cooling the Raptor engines on both stages before fuel loading is another critical procedure. This step is designed to minimize temperature differences between the engines and the fuel, protecting the engines from potential damage due to sudden temperature changes. As the countdown continues, both the booster and ship's fuel loading will complete a few minutes before liftoff. In the final seconds, the SpaceX flight director will perform a final check, leading to the activation of the flame deflector and engine ignition. This system is designed to safely redirect the intense heat and force generated by the engines away from the launch pad and the rocket. Immediately following this, the ignition sequence for the rocket's engines begins. With the initiation of the ignition sequence, all 33 Raptor engines come to life simultaneously, creating a monumental thrust that propels the rocket into its flight phase. The launch sequence involves a rapid transition from engine activation to liftoff, minimizing the thrust's impact on the launch pad. However, the initial launch demonstrated the significant impact the rocket's engines have on the launch infrastructure, creating a massive crater and extensive damage that took months to repair. This event highlighted the need for better protective measures against the intense forces and heat generated during liftoff. In response, SpaceX developed solutions like a massive water-cooled steel plate to protect the launch mount, although it wasn't ready in time for the first launch. These systems aim to cool the pad and absorb the energy released during launch to prevent similar damage. 
post liftoff, Starship, and its booster will head towards the Gulf of Mexico, following a southeastern trajectory. Around 52 seconds into the flight, the vehicle will experience max Q, the point of maximum mechanical stress. Stage separation, a key milestone, occurs shortly after, followed by booster engine cutoff and the ignition of Starship's engines to continue its ascent into orbit. Reaching orbit is a significant milestone, but the mission's objectives extend further. SpaceX plans to conduct payload door operations and a propellant transfer demonstration testing systems crucial for future missions. Upon completing all these steps in orbit, Starship will execute a re-entry maneuver, causing the effectiveness of its heat shield system and landing capabilities. The modified landing trajectory aims for the Indian Ocean. The first test flight began with a successful liftoff from Starbase, Texas. However, it quickly ran into problems. Damage to the launch pad occurred as the vehicle lifted off, attributed to three engines failing to ignite properly, causing the rocket to slide laterally off the launch pad. Throughout the flight, several Raptor engines failed, and communication with one of the engines was lost due to an unspecified energetic event. The flight ended prematurely when a series of issues, including fires in the aft end of the booster caused by methane leaks and resulting wire bundle damage, led to the loss of control of most of the booster's engines. This cascaded into a failure to attempt stage separation, ultimately resulting in the loss of both the booster and the spacecraft. Following the first flight, SpaceX made numerous improvements to the rocket systems. These included enhancements to the engine section purge system to prevent methane buildup and fires, updates to the flight termination system for better vehicle termination, and the introduction of hot staging to simplify the separation process and potentially increase payload capacity. During the second flight, the vehicle lifted off cleanly with all 33 Raptor engines functioning correctly. The hot staging process, a new feature for this flight, was executed successfully. With the spacecraft igniting its engines for separation while the booster's engines were still running. Despite a successful start, the second flight also encountered issues leading to its premature end. During the booster's boost back burn, progressive engine failures resulted in the booster's expansion. Later in the flight, planned vending of liquid oxygen in the spacecraft caused fires and explosions, leading to a loss of communication and ultimately the activation of the flight termination system. SpaceX's first two Starship flights ended in explosions, worsening their already difficult relationship with the FAA. The third flight is crucial for SpaceX to show improvements and comply with regulations. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.